One, two, two, crap. Three layers of plastic. That's to keep the rust off of them. That's from each country it comes from, you get one layer of plastic. So we've got the U.S. manufacturer. See how thick that plastic is? Yeah, goes? yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, good. that's like six mil. Okay, that's from the U.S. What do I call them, Taiwan Teddy? Yeah, Taiwan, yeah. I know he doesn't call you Taiwan Tetro. Now I get the next layer. This is blister bubble pack. Wear Scooby when you need them. That's probably when it hits on the way of China, they go to this one. Probably ship it through China or Singapore or something. Then you get to the, uh, the Taiwan packaging. That's really thin stuff. You can tear that, so. Then you actually get to the actual part that you're trying to get to, so. Well, at least they're flat. What makes you say that? Well, I'm guessing they are. I would never say that. Now, is there a top and a bottom to those? Let's put it this way. They're not ground. No, I see that. They're just standing. That think, makes them slick. Do you think they're laser cut? Hard to say. No, they're stamped. They look stamped to me. They're stamped. Now, is there an out and an in? Outboard, inboard? It says okay. out right there. Okay, didn't know. You know, it's like it's, looks like it's in the plate material, too. It's in the wear band. Yeah. That way it eats up the outer plate a little bit. That's good. It's only got two titties on it. It's just three like a big twin. So out goes out. You know why they do that? No. Because if you turn around the other way, the load hits this button. Ah. Breaks it right off the damn thing. I got gotcha. you. On the coast side, they still break and fall off because it's junk. My plate seals are going to be accidentally going to fall off. There it goes. Look at that tolerance on that. To be loose, not now to be those with fiber on each side, do they? Eat, there's no front or back. Nope. Only on a steel plate. I don't put them on the same pair. I'll move them to the next pair. Ah, okay. So it doesn't fit. Stuff should all work freely to not drag. See? It helps if this is flat too. There it goes. This moves it freely, which you want it to do. And we're going to put these Stock replacement. Always knows heavy duty for new bikes. How are you going to get that many springs on there? Carefully. And the first thing you do is make it a little bit easier for you. Filler plug and the kicker shafts all we're hitting on. So this way gravity helps us a little bit. See it helps us a little bit. Mm-hmm. Those are all the same, huh? They should be, but they vary slightly. Are those powder coated or painted? Yeah, they're probably dipped. Okay, so see all the titties here? They all go in the springs. Okay. Make sure the three studs line up. They're offset pattern. It's wider on this set than the other two. Yeah. I'll look at the stud over here and figure out which one's wide. You know, in case you can't see stuff like that, you got two, two, and three. Two, two, and three. Three would be the wide one. See, it's got three. Oh, yeah. So if you got defective eyes and can't see stuff, we don't need that one to see it fill off. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I guess I keep banging that bracket to pick it up. See that one fell in there? That's acceptable to build this like this, isn't it? While you've got it out. What do you mean after I got it out? Well, I mean the transmission is not in the bike. It's okay to build it. You just have to have everything off the bike to put together. Yeah. <clears throat> now here's a special washer going to Westcott cells, but you can use a valve collar or some other washer. Here's your screw. Now you're gonna have to put a little bit of grease in the end of that. Where's your tribe on that? You didn't think I do this with one hand, did you? Well. Now that end is the end of the throw-out bearing goes in there. Right, which we have not got cleaned up okay. yet because you failed to do your job. All right, well. I'm going to not fail to do my job. Should I put it in there for you? Now you don't want a little dab on the other side? On which side? Oh, no, that's right. Okay, that's the threaded side for the screwdriver, the flat blade. And this part here? Is this a special washer? No. Just a thick washer. So see I got about that far down, mm -hmm. so I just put the nuts on here. Obviously the groove side goes down. These are modern production, which is probably only you know, 30 year old production. Use some dad's old nuts, I think. I didn't mind that from the 90s, one or the other. <clears throat> Maybe they're only 20 years old. So you just go on to like flush to get starting point. Now, otherwise, there would have been a lock washer under there, right? Yeah. Locking tab. Mm -hmm. So that one's flush. Just feel across and mm -hmm. feel almost right. See, you're going to go half turn increments. So. These screws here, are those the same as toolbox and uh, everything else? Shift gate. Shift gate. Strap. Right. Pretty much, yeah. And then this is a spring and a bolt, special spring and bolt here to the frame. I don't use a spring. Okay. I bolt it just hard. helps. Oh, you bolt it hard. Okay. But normally there would be a spring under there, wouldn't there? Hardly use a spring. I don't use a spring. You have a spring, they all vibrate and all these rivets get loose and yeah. everything shakes and rattles and this all gets torn up here. Okay. So what I do is... <coughs> I bolt it down hard so it doesn't vibrate and shake and rattle and break. Gotcha. Yeah, different theories. Like this here is a flat <coughs> countersunk screw here. And this one here, they always have it flat. Yeah. So, but as soon as you put a screw in there, it dimples it. Why don't you just dimple the damn thing to begin with? But see, yeah. it's made to adjust because this, you know, the frame has a bend to it. Right, right. So that, that's why there's a slot. They don't know where it's going to be. Right. So they don't dimple it. They let the screw do the dimple. Which works. But it's just not as nice looking as well. Well, with the trans bolted in the frame and the engine bolt in the frame. Okay, now I don't know how far this is going to go, so it's going to go down to about here. It's not tight, it's just in there. Mm -hmm. These aren't adjusted, they're just flat, they're just okay. even. Now. Okay, now we got to measure these and see what they actually are for height. And what is the measurement between here and here? Whatever you want to make it. Okay. The book will give you a variable dimension. Now, of course, as you tighten that down, that's engaging the clutch, correct? Makes it stiffer. Oh. So right now we're at one and three sixteenths, which is probably the minimum number they use. It might be an inch and a quarter minimum, I forget. Okay. 31 30 seconds is the lowest number you're supposed to use, which is just under an inch. It's right there on the edge of my thumb. Okay. Which is way the hell down here. So usually I put these things in on stock bikes about an inch and an eighth as a starting point. 
So it's going to be one full turn. Pretty straightforward, huh? So it starts to get tension on it, starts making noise. Okay, we're just under an eighth, so one more. top of that. Right. So go over here and measure it here. And that one is just at an eighth, just over an eighth. So that's a starting point. Okay, now what you gotta do, you gotta release the clutch. If we had a lever and we can release it. And you make sure the pressure plate comes out evenly. If it comes out kind of like this, this side's not enough tension on it, so you put more tension on it, go half a turn until it starts to come out right. And just okay. keep jacking them back and forth until it pulls out evenly. And that would be the discrepancy in the springs. Well, you're hitting only on three, and it's not even. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's going to be different. I see. Okay. Now, if you have a large variable that's way off, and the thing really just wobbles real bad, then I would take it apart, mix the springs up with different combinations. Oh, I see. Put them in, and that takes care of a lot of times. Okay. But you got to get the pressure plate to come out evenly. If it comes out only one side at a time, yeah. until the whole thing comes out, it doesn't release. You're right. I got you. It's dragging. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Which would put some spring back in it that we don't have from the, from the other plate. If it hits just a little bit on one side, it takes it in kind of softly. Right. So if you want to make it soft, you can have a little bit of that built yeah. in. It's up to you. I adjust them so they're pretty flat. But you, know, you can play around with it. The next thing is, I only got an inch and an eighth worth of torque on here, which isn't much. So like I told you before, you take the bike, you rev it out in second gear, and you bang it in the third. Full power shift into it. And you want to get about a 15 to 20 foot clutch slippage that you feel. You can do it from low to second too if you want. Just, I, I want to feel that slippage, but second to third will give you a good slippage. What does that do? Get all glaze all the. That the... allows the plates to slip on the upshift, so it's like having a, a cush drive. Okay. It saves the transmission. Okay. And so I always dial. Even my bike's got that dial into it. But as the plates wear and they get more glazed up and they get more oil onto them, I've had to tighten my tension up quite a bit. So now I'm just about totally all the way in on my bike now. They got a lot of tension built into them, but you still get that slip. When I missed that shift up there, I went from one to four, one to three. That was a big upshift, and that the clutch just kept slipping. You can feel what the hell's that? And then, oh shit, I'm in the wrong gear because I didn't the motor. the motor's not revving. Boom! I bang it back in a second, and that starts pulling again. You're only there about a second, and you're through that gear already, and, it's, and you bang it back in the high again, and it works. But uh, like I said, you adjust that slippage in there so that it protects the, the, the transmission. Keep okay. breaking the teeth off of it. But uh, anyway, it's adjustable by how much you put tension on here. It also makes the rocker clutch easier to work. It's less wear and tear. The lightest tension you can run is the least amount of tension on everything, so it's okay. safe parts. So you adjust them. If you don't want this stuff all the rust in here, you can put a little paint on this thing like this, or put a little oil on it or something like that, WD-40. You know, how about just some... CRC, whatever. Well, we if you want, it, we can douche it with that so it won't rust. You want to put some on there? Go ahead. Uh, when you get the oil in here, like you're supposed to run, it should have a, a light coat of oil inside this whole thing. When the chain's lubricated correctly, this will have oil on it. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. And then we've got your new motor sprocket here, which is a 33 tooth, a big one. And then we have the 100 length chain because you're running a big sprocket. Will that need to be? Uh, Whenever you go over a 27 tooth sprocket, you need to go to 100 pitch. And what will that do for it? Just gives you more top end. Okay. And um, when Chip went to ride his bike, he killed it taking off because it wasn't like before. We just let the clutch out and go. You actually have to slip it a little bit now. And he went all the way down the street in low gear because he couldn't figure out how to make second work. Yeah, because he came back, he was smiling. <laughs> yeah, but he was in low gear all the way around the block. Oh. So the second time, he got into second gear going around the block. Normally, you'd be up in third gear with, by the third house. You got like one house per shift, you know. So it makes it much more rideable. Yes, it makes it more All fun. right, well, that chain won't need to be uh, cut or anything. No, it's continuous loop. Yep, it goes. And what's the torque spec on that motor sprocket? Tight. Okay. So rattle it off and rattle it on. I use a zip gun. You can put a little Loctite on the taper if you want. Okay. Uh, and there's a key and a lock and a new okay. nut in here. Now this nut will not fit your original shaft. Okay. 
because there's a different pitch diameter inside these nuts. So use the original nut. It's not the pitch, it's the helix angle, that's the angle of the thread. Oh, okay. So if you count the threads per inch, they're all the same, but the angle of the thread is different. Oh, okay. The helix angle is different between the original Harley parts and aftermarket parts. So these nuts only work on aftermarket shafts. If you have original parts, you got to use original parts. Oh, I got you. They don't mix. Okay. So, and what kind of Loctite? Red Loctite on that? Just red. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, once we get the uh, lever up on here, I can just see if this is adjusted right for how it okay. works. Boy, that's uh, pretty nice. I'm gonna have to weld all that up and do that in another day. Or something. All right. Okay. Cool. Anyway, we got this all in there for now. This is your initial adjustment, so you can go ahead and play with this. Now the lever, you have to adjust the lever with right here. But that's this. correct. Yeah. And the lever sticks out pretty far. It comes in about this far from full out. And you still got about this much of travel when you work it. Right. So that's about where it's at. If you look at the falcon angle, you want it to go over center. It'll be before center and go over center. Okay. Where the sweet spot is. Right. If you get too far one way or the other, the clutch doesn't release as much. Gotcha. So, and it it doesn't harder. release and it doesn't engage. I mean, and you it gets harder to work, too, because the leverage goes away. Right. Okay. So, it worked. the sweet spots where you have maximum lever leverage and maximum travel. Gotcha. Easy okay. doesn't work that way. You got one or the other, but... On that system, it's, that's how it works. All right, cool. And then whenever you, wherever that spot is, you adjust it down here, lock it down. Then you adjust your foot pedal cable in the cable. front for the rocker where you want the rocker to be to work with your ankle. Okay. If you don't have it where your ankle works, the bike's a bitch to ride. So. You want to make sure this isn't dragging when it goes in the bike. See, right, right now, there's lots of clearance on here. Right. But you have to mount it so it works. Sometimes you got to bend these brackets around a little bit. And, Okay. You also got shifter clearance over here. Now, now that this is on here, you won't have very good access here anymore. So, I would recommend that you get your lever up on here. Yeah. Before this gets mounted in there too deep. Yeah. So, put the thing on the bike, and if you can't drop it down enough to get this in, obviously put it up here where it's higher. Yeah. And then you'll have to drop this down, get the uh, lever on here. I mean, the rod on it before the shrine goes in. The right. Bike. Right. Okay. So you want to be able to get the cotter key in here. Right. This has your correct pin and stuff that follow. Well, you could pull it up into the other gear and get it on a little better. Yeah, but this sits up higher too, remember? I see. Here, so. No, but I mean, get the rod on, like you said. Just to yeah, get yeah. Where it needs to be. Right now, you are in low gear right now. All right, okay. So, to get this up into high gear, we have to manually get it up higher. Right, okay. So, so you got this much backlash. That's that's how much clearance you got, see? So, it's Boy, that's... Eight, it's about an eighth of a turn of backlash. Yeah, right? that's... That's okay, isn't it? That's how they are. Yeah. Boy, that's nice. Lots of backlash in them. Now, normally, I'd have this thing in neutral so you can put your chain in and all that, but right now it's all the way back. Now, on your bike, I might be able to put the screwdriver in here without doing too much damage and just pop it up in the neutral. Like right there. See, now we're in neutral. See, so it's brought this down yeah. over here. See how this thing rotates? Yeah. yeah. This makes it a lot easier to put the bike together because now these, these are independent. Right. So that's where you should be. Okay, cool. But you might have to bump it up into high gear, or up to probably not high, but like third gear would be probably the highest point up. And get your linkage on there. So whatever it takes. And obviously, you get the adjuster in here where it belongs. Right. Now, the adjuster, it, this cannot be in the bike when you put the tranny in. Okay. But before you tighten the tranny down, get the adjuster in there because this has to go in that groove in that Right. Tray. And uh, there's no tensioner on the primary chain. No, this and one. what's the tension on the primary you chain? Want three eighths to a half inch of free play at the tight spot. Three eighths to a half inch. Okay. And that's not yanking on it, it's just going up yeah. with the finger lightly. Yeah, okay. It's like using a pencil type pressure. Right. Mm hmm. Or a pen if you never A lot of that's so. just common sense, yeah. Yeah, well, Chip didn't have that much common sense. Oh, jeez. No, now that you got something flat here to work on, see now it sits. Boy, that's pretty cool. Man, that is. Uh, Hear the inplay? Yeah. You got inplay now, see? Yeah, that's nice. Now you can put tribidone oil in here to make it yes, get it going. Yes, definitely. And what do you recommend? We got that new 240 weight. I think that's what you should use. Okay. We'll put a quart on there. Brand we'll new extra. Get me a quart. Where is that stuff over here? 
Well, that comes in gallons, though. Well, you can make a quart, can't you? Well, if I have to. Well, do I need a gallon? No. How much is a gallon? It's a lifetime lubricant. Well, I was going to say, I shouldn't, shouldn't need to change it many times. Sounds like 70 weight in here. It sure does. That's 250. That's made for Pro Mod. Do you want your Pro Mod train to live? Do you, uh, That's what to use. you want to split a gallon? So we're going to have to, uh, have to pour out a quart for you. Did Chip put that in his? Hell no. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what he put in there. Anyway, that, uh, I've never changed the oil in my train except when I broke, uh, the shift fork. I had to take the, I had to take it apart to do that much, but I don't even know if I took the cover off. I might have the original oil in that bike. Is the capacity about a quart? Is it more? I don't remember. All right. Well, I better get half a gallon then. You put it in until it comes up to here. Yeah. It's not going to hold more than a quart. Okay. If you want to get two quarts, we can do whatever you want. I'll get two quarts. But this is the brand new stuff out to just come out with it. So yeah, I like it. I don't 250 know. weight versus the other stuff, which is a lot lighter. Here's the 7590. Well, I'm going, yeah. This is 75140. Right. Which isn't much different because they're the same. No. But this is 250. Yeah, that's some good stuff there. That's a big difference in the viscosity there. That's where we're going to use a four speed bike. All right, four speeds need it. They don't just want it, they need it. Huh. That. See, I'm the official mixer here in Santa California. See, I got the quartz. And I got the labels. Instruction sheet and label. See, I'm the official guy in San Diego for some uh, I can see that. That's, so, what, that's what happens when you're good with a manufacturer. So, you how many quartz. gallons of that do you have? You don't have much, do you? Two gallons. I bought four gallons. I bought a case of it. It's going to be some nasty blue stuff. Now, let me get my, get my stuff and we'll mix it up. Okay. All right, we're back. Alan took a lunch break there. Yeah. What kind of lunch did you get there, Alan? Okay, we're going to take our Trabadon grease here. I'm going to stuff it in this throat bearing because Alan didn't do it. So that means I have to do it. So you see the ball bearings in the hole here? You have to put the grease in between the balls. So you have to take it like a little pick and put it in here. This is too big. So I can use something smaller. You can't just pack it like you do a, a wheel bearing? Nope. You can't force it in there? Well, not if the ball's in the way. See, when the ball's in the way, like right here, it doesn't go in very well. Well, just turn so, it. So, well, how do you turn it? So I take my welding rod and I just stuff it in the hole. And this one's not going to fit either. See, I need something smaller, Alan. See, I use the smaller shooter. Boy, ever. it's pretty dry, isn't it? Here, Alan. I got the camera on the wrong side. I can't get my tools. I know it. That's what you get when you fire your cameraman. This will fit in a hole. Well, you were in a lunch break. I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, lunch break. Okay, so you take your pick and you stick it in there like that, and now you got an open hole. Yeah. So now I can put grease in there. See, once you put the grease in there, you can't see the bearings out. Okay. Now we're supposed to use the good stuff, you said, right? Well, only if you want it to last. Okay. And just pack it. We got that big hole we got to go through. Don't touch it. I fixed it. All right. So you bumped into it. That's why it was leaking. See, it's my shop. I know how my stuff works. I know that. Okay, so you pack in there like that, and you rotate a little bit. Still feels a little dry in there. You take this here, and you center it up in there, and it opens the hole up. You pack in some more. 
This is going to take Alan how long? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Two oh. minutes a ball times 10 balls. Are we going to videotape all 20 well, minutes I of don't. this? <laughs> it's your video. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Should be kind of self-explanatory, but... Now, how do you know when it's fully lubricated? When it quits grinding. No, well, that's only half the idea. Here's a ball right there. See, so do that. Now it's open. When the grease comes out on the inside oh, over here, okay. you know you, you got it packed in there pretty good. If you try packing a hole with the uh, ball right under it, guess what happens? It refuses to take the lubrication. It, it doesn't like it going in there. That is correct. You've done this before, haven't you? No. Okay. Just like I said, pretty self, pretty self-explanatory. So basically, any moron. No, I didn't. Don't go say that. Can work on this. It's a strange world out there, Keenan. You don't dare say that. I would say it. I don't care. Doesn't bother me any. I haven't been kicked off all of YouTube all the way yet. You're not going to get kicked off YouTube. The subscribers will have to complain, just like they did with that gal and. Just said something they didn't like. I think Ooh. she said she liked Trump or something. Oh, I what it was. and they kicked her off, yeah, huh? Yeah, it was a black gal, that's why. No kidding. Yeah. Hmm. Evidently, you can't be black and like Trump. It's against the rules. Jeez. Yep. She knows another 20 years, they won't know who that is. <laughs> yep, I agree. So you'll be old and shitty or dead. I'll be old and crappy. And the video will still be going. <laughs> and somebody will have your 45 and it will still be lubricated and working. Yeah, I'm thinking. Hope my boys would appreciate it. He's into a cafe eraser. He's going to make a cafe eraser out of it. No. That was his plan. I heard it. See, it's not making that grinding noise. Yeah, that's why I said that would be a pretty good telltale right there. Yeah, but there's no grease on the inside. Well. Yet. Have you ever seen those needle bearing greasers? Yeah, when you've got a plugged up Zerk? Yeah. Do you have one? No. I'll see if I can get one. They've got them at Pendleton. Yeah, whatever. Those are for people who are too lazy to do it this way. Well, I know you could make it squirt out. See, we get paid by the hour around here, so we got to make sure we take our there time. There you go. Union shop, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, I've worked with guys like that before. The only problem is the clock don't work, so we don't have the hours it's good. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, you get the idea how this is done. So Alan's going to take his own sweet time about doing this. Okay. See, the grease keeps disappearing, so I don't know what's happening to it. And that means it's accepting it. Is that what it is? Yep, I would think if you could get enough in there, it ought to last for an awfully long time. It would be lifetime lubricated? I would think so. But see, it's still not coming out of the side yet. Okay, but anyway, you get the idea. Okay, and you're going to... Uh, Chip, duh. You're going to go Alan's in. Alan's going to figure that out. Now, we're, now we got Alan wants some oil. So we're going to have to pack the oil in here. So we have our oil fill station here. We have one of these. This is a 99 cent store. Yeah, that's, I think you get three of them for 99 cents. Yeah, that's a pretty good pie tin there. And then I got the original Dad's funnel that I've remodified to make it bigger for higher flow. This is vintage. Probably antique now. If you need this, you need this, but nothing else just holds a funnel because this is nasty blue stuff. It makes a mess. Okay, so Alan doesn't want to buy a gallon because he's cheap. I don't need a gallon in a light. What else would you use? That on? I'm not sure what this costs, but I'm thinking it was way over hundred dollars. So, so we're gonna use these quart containers that the tribe that I gave me. Now they didn't give me the sticker to put on the top, so it's gonna be open. Can I do this? Is that clean? Yeah, I bet they're clean. It appears to be clean. Yeah, it might be used. Mm, that yeah. one looks okay. pretty clean. Do you want to put the sticker on now or later? Ah, uh, you can put it on later. Okay, we'll do that later. Okay, we'll put that in there because Alan's is messy. Well, you're going to do the pouring. Oh, I'm doing the pouring. You want me to hold it? Shit, that means I'm going to be messy. It's my fault now. We don't want cheese. Now, what color do you think it's going to be? Well, you said blue. You said blue. I think blue except ATF so far. Okay. 
Yeah, I just put two holes and stuff just for the hell of it. I put one there and one over there. The air comes out. Oh, look at that. It's not blue. It is pukey oil looking flavor. Motor honey. Look how thick that that is like motor honey. Look at how look at the viscosity of that stuff. Boy, it won't even go through the funnel hardly. That's gonna be some good stuff. There's a reason why this stuff costs so much. It doesn't smell like stinky ass high poly gruel though. Well it's full synthetic, isn't it? I don't know what it is. It makes your ProMod transmission live 10 runs instead of 1 or 2. What is a ProMod? That would be a big engine and a small car, either on nitrous oxide, turbocharged, or supercharged, but no nitro. So that's obviously not for me. Yeah, you're kind of nitroed. That is some nasty stuff. How's it feel on your fingers? That feels like stick them. Look at that. Look at how sticky that is. It's, yeah, it's got no, sort of a it smells fossil. Like high, it smells like high spoil gear. But boy, oil. it's sticky, isn't it? Yeah, it smells like high spoil gear. Yeah, oil. it does. But boy, it's on there. That was not even half a quart. No, I know. I'm going to have to get bigger holes. Boy, that stuff's gluey, isn't it? It's sticky stuff. No, I didn't make it blue. It is thick, though. Well, you put that in your four-speed churning, that's going to make it nice and sticky. <laughs> make it live? Yeah. You want your flashlight? I need my flashlight. See how the funnel's in the oil? No, oh, okay. When the funnel's no, in the not, oil, that means you're it's close. It's not there yet. That's a bubble down at the That's bottom. That's a bubble? Yeah, you're not even half a quart yet. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. That's how thick that stuff. It wouldn't even go through the end of the funnel. So we're going to use a bigger screwdriver <laughs> to make the hole? I don't know unless you want to be here all night. Okay, we'll That's work. some sticky stuff. Okay, we opened up the uh, main feed hole. Yeah. Seemed like a lot's in there, but it's not. The bubble popped. There, look at that. Now it's coming out. Now it really, you want to put a little heat on it, maybe? Maybe it'll go <laughs> through there a little easier. Hell, it's not too cold in here, but it sure acts like it. Huh? Yeah, you can smell it. It's like high point gear, you can smell it. That's some nasty ass stuff. Getting closer? No. We need another load of that. So he needs to come out with this in quartz, that way I don't have to spend an hour doing this myself. Yeah, but she'd probably use a... See, that's so thick it wouldn't even wipe off. It didn't even come off the container. No, it sure doesn't. <laughs> it just smears. That's got some stickum to it. Yeah, we're getting there. You sure this is a gallon in here? <laughs> All right, that's enough of that one. Can't make it not come off there without making a mess. Oh, it's getting there now. It's not quite a quart, though, I don't I don't know. It's up to here. What's a quart? Well, hard to say. About that much more that to That would do it, I imagine. We'll find out when we get to the last one. It only has yeah, half, then, a, half a quart. Yeah, <laughs> nothing left. We know that we got a problem. <laughs> now, if you do the, uh, if all we'll the get ones, out another one because I want two quarts. Um, Here, save this. I am going to use. I got to do another quart. I know, but I can care. I can catch it just I like have that. More, I have more quarts. I know, but you can catch it. So when you do the ATF like this, it makes a big, it goes quick. I just did some two-cycle oil like this too. 
it drains a lot quicker than this stuff does. This stuff is thick. Yeah, Mark had the guy uh, come to me to get the oil made because he didn't want to do it. <laughs> Manufacturer didn't want to go through trouble of doing this. He let me do it. Well, that's okay. I like helping the customer. Well, you know, out. while you're doing this and you got a dirty fennel, you might as well fill four quarts. I figured I'd probably empty out this container since I was doing it. And let the quart, let the gallon drain. I'll come back in a week. It'll still be wet. Well, I, you know what I mean. Drain out. Okay. Upside down. It won't drain all the way out. There's no way. Let me see. Let me stamp out here. One advantage of this is it doesn't leak out. I don't overfill it. It takes too much to do it. Getting a lot lighter. <laughs> mm, about here. to do another? Yeah, it's about the same as it was on the other one. We're probably a little under a quart. Oh, you missed it. That's why you put over the other one. You made a mess. Look at yeah, this. Sure did. Alan made a mess. Mr. Clean here. All right, well, you guys get the idea. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, we're back. We found out that the additive's all in the very bottom. It's black. So we got down to three quarts. Last one it started getting black was coming out. So we've been mixing it all back up again. So you get this nice black color in there. It means you got the good stuff. Get ready to those two. Let's move on to these two. This is really nice fun. So you see when it comes out nice and black when you got the good stuff in there. The start of the video we were commenting on how golden it looked and this is the same stuff yeah you'd just never mixed, just mixed you'd, you'd never know it was out of the same jug so this is the uh it's got a lot of graphite in it probably among other stuff but. so now i'm just putting equal quantities in each one Hold on to it. let me stick a full funnel in each jug each quart container and then i'll shake it some more I need to pull the funnel toward you, not me. You know, so the funnel fills up my side first. Okay, so now we got that much all of them, so we'll go back and do that again. That way, no one quart gets all the good stuff like it was done before. The first quart didn't get any of the good junk in it. <laughs> Toward you, it's all on my side, and it fills up first on my side. We're gonna be on ground. It's well aerated too. You can see the air bubbles in it. <laughs> and Alice said it clings a lot better when it's black. Look well, at it's, it. it's of course he couldn't tell, but it's just not going away. Pretty sticky. Well, it's definitely sticky. It's all over the place right now. Hold the funnel. It's definitely sticky. Messy job. So we're about a half hour to do this. Charge an extra 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I tell them to come in quartz next time so we don't have this problem. How do you think they agitate the big main source though when they're filling this? They just mix in a big drum and then they just dump it all out in one shot. Probably got a hundred gallons at a time they're doing. It's only doing like 50 gallons at a time. It's only one drum. That's not a very big mixer. It's not very economical. You're going to be constantly cleaning it all out and starting over again. You're going to do at least 100 gallons at a time. <clears throat> Minimum. of it now. One thing about this, it's not going to leak out them four-speed Harleys very much. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. It'd be real good for old trains like Model A's and T's and the old T10's and stuff, the thicker oils and top loaders, all that stuff like that. Definitely the Mopar trains, them things are truck trains. My Super B will be happy. I burned up my Super B by putting light oil in it. Charlie always made noise after. Put I that thought crap you said you had that for sale. I put ATF in that thing once and it just killed that train. What were you looking for by putting an ATF in there? Uh, back in the time, everybody was putting ATF because they were using all those modern trainings. And back in the uh, 80s, they started playing around that crap. So you don't know anything when you're a kid. So, found out, don't do that, dumbass. It just burns up your shrimp. You put three quarters of a funnel in that one. And then you live and you learn. So, I put the uh, Maxima uh, 80 weight in there and it calmed it down, made it shift a lot better. It's real free shifting. The ATF didn't shift all that good, it was still pretty crappy. Them old transmission are made to be thick oil in them, and that's what they like. It's like Harley. Next. That's about what we had them last time. At least now it's the same color black coming out, not going deep black like it was. Well, that's pretty evenly distributed, I would think, huh? Well, I'm going to let it pour overnight in this container over here. I mean, I'll pour it into this. I mean, we're pretty, uh, pretty equally. Yeah, we got the. This one's a little bit higher. That one's up pretty high. Mm, they all look pretty good. This one's high. That's high. This one's lower. This one's a little bit high. These are equal. This is the lowest one right here. I have to talk to the uh, mixer, the head mixer. There, oil this thing. There it goes. <laughs> How long did that take before it started coming out? God. Yeah, you can hang that up all night. It'll certainly drain. It'll probably still be in there tomorrow when I come back, I bet. Yeah, I'm going to let it sit. Faster going at this angle. So it's probably it collects over here, and then you have to come back like that to let it come back into the container. But we're not getting any chunks coming out now, so that's a plus. Okay, how high is that one now? About the same as all the other ones, close to it. Still a little lower. I think it's just going to wind up getting all the stuff to slow up. Anyway, I'm going to let that drain. We'll let that sit overnight and fill up. Alright, we got a big mess here to clean up, so I'm going to clean these all up. We'll be back. 
Alan's trying to hide from me. Alright, we're putting our labels on right now. So this is the before, the after. <clears throat> and if you wonder how much this stuff costs, it's damn expensive. That's how much it costs. Call for pricing. You have to look on the website to see how yeah, bad it call is. Call for pricing. It's bad. Well, I'm going to put on my bike. I don't care. I don't want Where do you want stuff. these other bottles, Tetro? What bottles? The empty quart. Just leave them in there. I'll have to fill them up later. Oh, okay. They go up here in the stack of the oil behind me here. So. Anyway, these just go in here like this. These are gallon stickers. They don't fit quarts, but they make them fit. It says right on love it's for high point gears and deer boxes and industrial applications and all kinds of stuff like that on the bottle. So Harley's an industrial application, I think, isn't it? I would say so. Did I put the same label on both sides or did I put the other label on the other side? You put the disclaimer on the back. Disclaimer on the back. Which side is the back? <laughs> Whichever side the other label's done on. And Alan said I was putting these on crooked, too. Yeah, well, it's late. It's late. It's my fault. I thought I was doing a good job. So they got the crease right here. It's kind of lined up with the line there, but it doesn't quite make it that way. But And he said the labels are going to fall off, too. But no, they're pretty sticky. I guess I did a good enough job of cleaning the uh, containers up. So we got the good, <clears throat> good mix in there. Anyway, that's how you do it. So if you want the full gallons, we got a case of it over there. So there you go. Right, Alan? You don't yes, want to be in the sir. video. So I got a couple for you, a couple of cases there, and then I got some oil on the shelf too. There you go. And still no shirts. They blew me off another day. They say tomorrow though. We'll find out. Alright, that's it for tonight. Your fingers get dirty? No. Okay. That's what you do the bearing. Right there. Well, he said it's well lubed now. It's coming out the back side. Yep. Where's the light? Not the front side, but the back side. It, it, it was evenly out all the way around. Yeah. Here's my tripod. Steal it? I just put it up there. You're hiding it from me. How am I supposed to get all this other crap mixed in here? You can't mix them together. I can't get them out. You didn't get my grease dirty, did you? No, I just wanted to make sure it was clean for you. Yeah, we're not done with that, you know. Okay. Smaller. All right. Alan's getting lazy, so. Ugh. Get my this big box. That clutch hub's in it. Okay, we'll put some more back in there. Okay, so now we gotta put this together. You need to pat my tub in here, Alan. No, I didn't. <laughs> so you gotta loop up your tip. Okay, that goes into the index on the adjustment screw on the outside of the clutch, right? On the inside, but yeah. Okay. So you lube up your shaft here. And that goes through that main shaft. Mm-hmm. Goes right there. Okay. See, you're not filming, so nobody can see what I'm doing. This is probably going to be lifetime lubricated in here. I was going to say, boy. So you don't want to get too stingy on your on your goop. And there's also that seal in there too, huh? The seal's right there. There. Okay, now we're against the clutch. So now if I push really hard, I can release it. Except I can't push that hard. So before this goes together, we got to put 
You have to lube this up real good on this side over here. For now, I'm just going to pack a little bit of grease in there so nothing gets in there. And wipe that off before we put fresh stuff on there if you want. And then the kicker cover in the arm. That I have to weld up yet and fix it. So that'll be another day. So this is good to go at this point. Alright, well thanks for getting all that done. And your, um, your spring was here earlier. It's right there, yeah. You didn't paint this yet. No, I like it though like that. It's you like it nasty? Yeah, it's a ridge. It's going like that or going like this? That's the way it goes. It goes like this? Yeah. Holds it down? Because it cranks down. Puts tension on to go up, see, when you go like that, it makes it rotate up. Oh, okay. So it goes on like that, yes. But we got to put some tension on it to make it work. All right, so there's your whole assembly. Minus the uh, kicker cover. A sprocket cover, you know what want to call it. So we're still looking for a wide clutch arm. If somebody's got one, then I can put my NOS cover on there. Otherwise, a stock Harley narrow cover will work. So yeah, there's the whole clutch. Barnett racing clutch. Yep, get all the fancy stuff in there. So Alan's going to take a sweet time about getting this bike together, so I better do something about rust prevention. What are we going to do about rust prevention? I don't know. You said you were going to oil it down. I'm a little nervous of that. I don't know why I'd want to spray oil on a clutch. I but put some of this Travadon. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I know. I've never used that stuff before. Really. Or otherwise it would rust up, huh? There you go. Perfect. You're lubed. It's got a new smell to it now, too. Yeah, all right. Way cool. So now it won't rust for a little while. That'll stop it from rusting for some time, but, you know, if you get water on it, it's still going to it'll rust. Well, I'm not going to be getting any water on if it. If you throw in the box and stuff, it'll be good for a few years like that. Now, I can get down inside of here so it can still rust in there a little bit, but... It'll be what it's going to be. Boy, that's awful nice, Tatro. It's all the way there. Here's your kicker arm. I don't know where your bolt went to yet. Did well, I don't know. For you? I'm not sure. What about my pedal? I don't know where your pedal's at. I know. Where's my old ugly pedal? Is it back there? I don't know. All right. I might have that I already. I did find a bleeder over here, though. I might find that at home. What do you mean a bleeder? Makes me bleed. Oh, did you hook on that? That's cast. That's nice. That, that's we nice. Could, that's nice for your finger to bleed, but not mine. We could dress that off a little. You don't. You don't, you want to get rid of the bleeder? Uh, that's original bleeder. That's cast. Boy, that's or. Uh, These aren't cast. That are forged. Oh, forged. Well. It looks to me like there's a. There's a big sliver in there. We'll knock it off if you want. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. You got a file there. Why are you tempting fate? Because wow, it's that? a chip. That's why. Yeah, big old piece. It's a nose picking piece of crap there. Look at, there's no more titty on there to poke me. <laughs> yep, I see that. And I didn't deface your original yeah, paint I, by putting a file on it. I see that. You know why I don't put a file on it now? Yep. You see, I knew what I was doing. Okay. That's why you get paid the big bucks. I got paid? Damn, that's different. That's a nice piece. What did we pay for that? Uh, I think it was around a hundred and a quarter. Wow. NOS. The last ones I had, I was getting 150 or 175 out of them. We used to have a bunch of them, but we sold them all off. So, so I had to go online, eBay, hunting for it. They I just, still got some left. You had a big, uh, big crate full of them. Probably had like a hundred of them. You mean a eBay, the folks that just closed your account? Yeah, the ones that don't like me right this minute. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get that straight out tomorrow. 
Yeah, they say I duplicate the listings too many times. They're a damn stupid plan. It's their problem, not mine. They did that before and there was nothing wrong, so call it again. It's like you're wasting your time talking with them. They got nothing better to do to so bother you. All right, so we're done with the training for now. Boy, that's a beautiful. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the kicker until we get this on here. No, it just gets in the way. All right. And uh, you should have all your other bolts and stuff. And here's your chain and stuff to put it on the bike. All right. But you gotta get all your hardware for doing the bottom training. Right. And all stuff. Well, I got all that. The kicker cover all we can put on. You know, if I get it done in time before you leave, I'll get it on here. All right. You can cool. Do it later. Cool, cool. Just don't steal all my fancy tools. Here. No, 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 I'll no. These tools back Those spacer to, bolts. I'll need these back to do the other training. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, well, I'll be back. To, we'll throw that other one together quick. Yeah, I, I doubt it. But. All right. We're Thanks. Done, we're done for night for sure. Man. Thanks, Mr. Tatro. All right. Nice.